All right, praise the Lord. Welcome to our daily bread today. We are so enjoy you coming and watching and listening every day. And we're talking about decision making, which is a class at the school of ministry called Developing Critical Thinking Skills. But really, the theme of that is decision making. And I want to share with all of us some ideas about how to make good decisions. And during times of pressure, like in pandemic, we want to avoid making bad decisions all our life, whether we're in pressure or not. Because bad decisions cost us time and cost us money. Good decisions does the opposite. Makes good advantage of our time, helps us to prosper and get more things done. No matter how old we are, we've all made some real good decisions and we've all made some bad ones. And probably every one of us have said, I'll never do that again. <laughs> so we want you, first of all, no condemnation, no judgment. We're all realizing, oh, I got a lot to learn. My grandson, Malachi, who I do appreciate and just love all my grandsons and my one granddaughter. Uh, we only have one granddaughter. We have 11 grandsons. What a unique situation. And another grandson coming in uh, August. So the grandsons outweigh the granddaughters. But one day, I was with Malachi, and he was doing something outside. If I remember right, it involved some mechanical things and a bicycle. And I said to him, uh, I'm not sure I would do it that way. Oh, yes, he said, I'm going to do it this way. I said, okay, well, all right. And I went on in. Now, knowing that what he's thinking about is not going to hurt him, he's not going to get injured, it's just not going to work out too good. So pretty soon he came in. I said, uh, how did that work out for you? He said, well, Grandpa, I'm not going to do it that way ever again. <laughs> and, you know, all of us have had those times. Well, I'm not ever going to do it that way again. So uh, let's grab a hold of God who wants to help us make good decisions, but yet he wants us to become uh, able to make decisions independently on our own as we're led by him and our spirit bears witness with his spirit. We have the beautiful option of having a will. We have a will. What a wonderful blessing, which gives us the options to make decisions. I want to learn to make decisions properly based on the word of God, what the Holy Spirit is le will, uh, leading me to do and what the will of God is. There's some fundamental things for us in our decision making. Now, as I closed last Daily Bread, and if you weren't with us, just go back and watch. I believe that you will be blessed. Having pastored for 38 years, having been a father for, well, 43 and a half years, married almost 45, I've seen a lot of people make really good decisions, and I've watched uh, people make some bad ones. And during pandemic time, it seems like the pressure sometimes causes us to make some bad decisions. And I'm thinking, ooh, that's going to hurt. But that's how we mature and grow. And so let's continue on. Reasoning is sometimes defined as analytical thinking. So using past experience, present values, what God has put in your heart, helps us make a good choice. This can be referred to as intuition. It involves our emotion. If you think you're going to be making decisions through the day, or you and your wife, or you and your children, or as a family together, and remove emotion, you're wrong. You're very wrong. So let's uh, move forward with that. It does reflect your learning in life and can be helpful. Intuition, emotion, when combined with reasoning. And reasoning is using facts and figures to make a decision. Remember the example I gave you about David Miha and another pastor in their church, an elder in their church, a great young man. Well, they were very good about uh, reasoning, using facts and figures to make a decision. But they had kind of removed emotion from it. Brother David's a pastor, but he's a prophet. The other young man's an engineer. But some emotion was emerging from the other pastor, who's also a prophetess, caller, as well as transmission, because she likes to drive manual transmissions. So we're going to make this decision go beyond facts and figures, but we're going to include them. And it seems to be facts and figures help contribute to reality. Now, both intuition, values, reasoning, analytical thinking helps us make good decisions. So again, we make decisions all day long, big ones and small ones. Some need to be made quickly. 
because you don't have much time. Some can be made slowly because you have more time. But life experience and being able to, at times, when needed, do a quick assessment can be of a great value when needed, especially in an emergency or especially when a certain situation is presented to you. I'm thinking of a young couple in my church, and they've been married a while, and they have a beautiful son. I love them both very much, and their little boy is wonderful. And uh, one day, the husband called me, and I so appreciate this young man. I've pastored him many years. I pastored him more years than I pastored his wife. So he was here when he was younger. And he called me and he said, Pastor, uh, let's see, I'll try to use fair language. He had an opportunity to buy a house, which was next to a piece of property that he currently owned, he and his wife. He wanted to buy the house. His wife did not. And it seemed as though, Pastor Eric, there was a little bit of tension in the air. <laughs> so they called me. And uh, he wanted to call me and have my input. And she wanted to call me and have my input. Now, neither one of them told me this. This is my perception only. And we must be very careful with perception because it could be wrong. But I think that my perception was, well, I think she was a little fearful and thought maybe I would support her in decision to not buy it. I think he was a little excited about the opportunity and just knew that I would jump in there and say, buy it. Perhaps. But see, when it comes to decision-making and we seek godly counsel, someone with experience, walk with God, knows the word, has fruit in this area we're asking, we need to stay teachable. We need to stay teachable. So, Decision-making, again, a thought process that leads to selecting a choice among available options. A thought process that leads to selecting a choice from other available options. So, some need to be made quickly. Some can be made more slowly because you have more time. So, life experience and a quick assessment can be a great value when needed especially in emergencies or where there's limited time. Now, good decisions have several components that help the process. Weigh the positive and the negative. Number one, weigh positive and negative. Number two, consider all the options and all the alternatives. Number three, look ahead, look down the road, and predict or forecast possible options and possible results. This is all good. Good decision-making is based on multiple items. We determine which option is best for a particular situation. Now, back to our example of the young couple in church. They're both on the phone. They, he tells me, we're on the speakerphone. I want to buy this house. The neighbor offered to sell it to me for this much money. Okay. Uh, I, I'm hesitant, but we trust you, Pastor, and we need help to make this decision. So that was wise, I believe, for this couple. Ultimately, I want them to make the decision, okay? So I say to him, you want to buy this house? Yes, give me the details. The neighbor has said, I will sell you this house for this much money. I believe it's a good buy. I believe it has lots of potential for the future, and we should buy it. I said, okay. Now, why are you sister, the wife, uh, why are you reluctant? Well, I don't want him gone all the time. I don't want him to spend a lot of time where they're fixing things up. I'd like him to be home more with me and our child. Oh, that's very good. So let's say again, that's very good. Remember, decision-making also involves the emotion. So I said, all right, now, young man, I'll say, young man, young lady from now on, um, what were your plans if you buy the house? 
well, I'd like to completely remodel it and do this, 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 and this. How long would that take? Several months. All right. Um, does it have a renter? Yes. Now let's look at the numbers. So you can get it bought at a very good price. You can finance it for 80%, not pay PMI. That's all wise. Owning the house next to you is a very good idea. Making better use of driveways, accessibility, etc. All that's very good. Here would be your monthly payment. What's the current rent? Current payment is this much. Current rent is this much. You're going to be making money every month. Do you have to change anything in the house? No. All right, so improvements could be made slowly over time. Yes. You would, have been, you would immediately be making money. Yes. All right. So let's take both perspectives and make a good decision. Sounds like you're both saying to me, buy the house, finance it for 80% or less, no PMI, make money every month, save money, and as you have time, you could do some remodeling and improve the value. Spend more time at home, more time, time with your wife and your son, and if we all came to that agreement, there would be peace and harmony in this decision. Do you agree with that, brother? Yes. You agree with that, sister? Yes. So when you look down the road, because remember, as here talking about components of good decision making, weigh the positive and the negative to the best of our ability, plus and minuses. Consider all options and alternatives. Look ahead and predict or forecast possible options, possible results, and those are good things to do to the best of our ability. And then based on those items, we can determine which option is best. So note, they came to agreement. They purchased it. Everything miraculously got worked out. And they owned the home. And they kept their agreement. So now they have unity. He didn't go in and gut it, remodel it, and spend all these hours and all this time after work, he left it like it was with some minor alterations to improve it for the renter. He and his wife are in agreement. He's home more with his wife and child. He's not working night and day. Let's say this together. Those are some good decisions. That is a good process. So remember that most decision-making begins with some sort of problem or some sort of need or some sort of situation that needs to be satisfied and resolved, which is going to require thought, looking ahead, considering options, and sharing from one another's heart what your thoughts are and what you're thinking about. But there was a time when I was going through college, had an opportunity to farm, uh, provide for the family, go to school full time, start the church, etc. It was a very demanding time. And I had some money set aside. And I wanted to buy some cattle. So the more cows I could buy in the beginning, the more cows I'd have, the faster things would grow and the more money I'd make. Men typically tend to look long-term, generally speaking. Women tend to look more short-term and recognize the needs of the family. Now, how many know we need both? We need to recognize the short-term needs of family and long-term goals. Because if we only do one or the other, we're going to fall short somewhere. But if we can combine short-term needs and long-term goals together, everyone can benefit. So my wife said, we need a new couch and chair. And I said, okay, uh, that's, that would cost me back then one cow. I think I had enough for four cows. It's a slow start, but it's a start. Four cows, when I was done, would wind up being 82. 80 cows and two bulls. And we prospered. Now, if you do the math, buying five cows instead of four to start makes a huge difference. I said, okay, we'll buy four cows and one couch and chair. So <clears throat> that's what we did. It met the short-term needs of the family and hospitality, 
We used that couch for, and chair for well over a decade, probably closer to 15 years, and then passed that on to others as we moved and our home changed and our situation changed. It was still very usable and very nice quality. My wife was happy and I was happy. I had to have some surgery, so while I was in surgery, she bought the couch and chair while I was in the hospital. And she told him, she said, now, uh, I'll buy this based on one thing, that if my husband doesn't like it, you'll come get it and take it back and give me my money. They agreed to that and put it in writing. They brought it out and delivered it while I was gone. So when I came home, walking very slow, struggling a bit, uh, she said, here's the new couch and chair. Do you like it? I said, oh, I think we ought to call him, take it back. Oh, she was disappointed. And I said, I'm kidding. I like it a lot. And she hauled off and hit me in the arm, Pastor Bobby. But that's a good relationship, wouldn't you say? Oh, I laughed and laughed and chuckled, went and laid down in bed. And she's been happy ever after with her blue flowered, beautiful couch and chair that I'm sure is still being of use somewhere in somebody's life. So decision making, especially when you're married and family involving other people, if we're selfless, we'll involve others in the decision. We can come to agreement. And where there's unity, the Holy Spirit can work. And that decision can wind up being an absolute phenomenal blessing. And everybody say it. Amen. All right. A remote, uh, a reminder, sorry. Most decision making begins with either one kind of problem or a problem, some sort of problem, or a need, or a situation that has to be satisfied. Welcome to decision making. A lot of people say, I don't like making decisions. But I believe God wants to bring you to a place of peace where there's no fear of making a decision. You're not worried. And that you know you can actually make good decisions based on the Word of God as the Holy Spirit leads us. And that's my prayer for all of you today as you're listening, that God would come right now wherever you are and heal the pain of the past where you feel like you failed or made a mistake or lost something. Remember, God's got a restoration. God's got a restitution, and He'll show great mercy in your life. I just stand in awe as I watch people and how God works in their lives. They have made some horrible mistakes in the past, but now they've gotten a hold of God. Now they're walking with the Lord. Oh, and the fruit of the Spirit in their life is phenomenal. If you would remind me, Pastor Martha, of our upcoming women's meeting, uh, I would like for Chrissy Jones to share with those ladies, just how the Lord has so blessed her life. What well, looked like horrible situations happening, but her persistence and relying on God and how God had honored her pure heart has so blessed that family that she could be an encouragement to a lot of women during this time, especially single moms with a lot of needs, eh? Let's have her share. She's been a good decision maker because her decisions have really evolved from the right heart which is where we began. Decision-making. A step-by-step -step process can help you find more satisfying alternatives and end results. And that's the goal of this Daily Bread the next few weeks. And with that, folks, I'm going to come to a place of closure. This is a good stopping point. Now, through this week, I'm going to be recording some more Daily Breads on site. I have some jobs to do, and it's going to be too hard to run back and forth. So I'll ask the guys to come join me with the camera. You'll be able to come visit me at some of the work sites. We'll break open the Word of God and talking about making decisions, looking at the facts, past experiences, observing things, using good decision-making process, a good plan, strategy to come up to great results. We ask Holy Spirit to seal these words in our heart today, as well as bring healing, hope, encouragement, and comfort to all of you. Thanks for being here. We look forward to seeing you again one day. God bless you.